Welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be installing Kali Linux version 2024.1 inside VirtualBox on a Windows 11 PC. Before we begin, let's take a look at the minimum requirements. You're going to want at least 2 gigs of RAM, 4 is recommended, 20 gigs of hard disk space, 1 CPU core, but 2 is recommended, the Kali Linux image, and VirtualBox and the extension pack. If you don't have VirtualBox installed, you can check out this video and I'll walk you through the steps. All tools and links will be in the description below. If you found this video useful, please give us a like. Now let's get to installing Kali Linux. All right, so I'm at my Windows 11 desktop. I'm going to go over here and open up my browser and I'm at the Kali Linux website. It's Kali.org. I'm in the download section. And what we want to do is use the installer image. So I'm going to click on this. It's going to jump over to the installer image. If we scroll down a little bit over here, we can see that we have Kali Linux 2024.1 latest version that's out right now. I'm gonna be using the 64-bit version. It's 3.8 gigs. We're gonna go ahead and click on the download option and it's gonna go ahead and download the ISO image file. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over to the next step where this has been downloaded. All right, so our download is now complete. You wanna make sure that you know where the file has downloaded because we're gonna be pointing to that later. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this window. All right, and now that we have the operating system downloaded, we're gonna open up VirtualBox. Inside VirtualBox, I'm going to create a new virtual machine. So click on the new button right over here. And now we're going to give it a name. So I'm going to type in Kali Linux. The folder is going to be fine with me. And the next thing is going to be my image. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go into other. And I'm going to go into my downloads folder and I'm going to select the image that I just downloaded. I'll select that, click on open. We're going to go down over to hardware. Uh, for hardware, we have the RAM at two gigs. You can increase this as long as you're in the green space. Uh, I'll just go up to four. I find it runs a little bit smoother with that. CPU cores, you need at least one, but you can max this out as well. Or you can just gauge it. As long as you stay in the green area, you're going to be fine. And then down here in hard disk space, I have 25 gigs allocated to it. It's in my C drive. You can select another drive if you're running into space issues or increase this if you, want, if you require more space. Uh, once you have that all selected, you can click on the finish button. It'll pop up over here on the left hand side. We can now make sure it's selected and click on the start button to start the installation. Okay, we're in the user menu right now. We have a few options that we can select over here. We're gonna be using the graphical install. So we'll go ahead and select that and hit enter on our keyboard. Now it's gonna allow us to select the language and region settings. I'm gonna be using all default settings, but you can select whatever works best for you. So I'll be selecting for language, I'm selecting English. Uh, location, I'll leave as United States. The keyboard configuration, I'm gonna leave as American English. Uh, for partitioning method, we're gonna use entire disk. And then the drive that we have is our virtual drive. It's the only one listed here. And we're gonna use all files in one partition. We're now gonna finish partitioning and write changes to disk. And we just need to confirm that by selecting yes, and then continue. It's not gonna go ahead and start installing the operating system. This might take a few minutes. I'll jump over to the next step. Okay, next we have the option to select different software that we want installed. I'm gonna be leaving everything as default and click on continue. So next we're gonna be installing the bootloader and we'll click on continue. And we're gonna be selecting the virtual drive and we're gonna let the installation finish up. Installation is now complete. We can go ahead and click on continue to reboot the virtual machine. Okay, and we're at the login screen. We can now enter in the username and password that we had created during the installation. All right, and now we're at the Kali Linux desktop. We can go up to the view menu at the top and go into full screen mode and then click on switch. And here we are at the desktop of Kali Linux version 2024.1 inside VirtualBox on a Windows 11 PC. All the apps that you need are up here in the top. They're already preloaded. You can go ahead and do whatever you want. And, and that's all there is to it. I hope you found the video useful. If you did, please smash the like button. Thank you for watching. Catch you on the next one.